What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Trank. Today I'm going to be taking this old axe head that I have and giving it a handle and a sheath and sharpening it up, tuning it up a bit. So it should be a pretty fun project and give me a new tool to use. So let's go ahead and dive in. So I'm using this blank of two by two inch walnut to make this handle. Now the first mistake I made is right off the bat here, I traced the eye that the um, axe handle is going to have to fit into on the axe itself on the blank and I didn't perfectly center it which means when I mounted it to the lathe things, the handle slightly off center from the actual axe being mounted. So that was kind of a bummer but it's not the worst thing. So I started off trying to use a pocket knife to start whittling it down and that did not work very well. So uh, I figured I'd clear out the majority of the waste just using my dovetail saw here. So I saw off the uh, four edges here that aren't going to be unneeded. That'll just save me a lot of time with the sanding. And then in order to actually get that profile that I need to fit the axe, I use a Dremel tool with a sanding drum on it. And I, you can see I skipped some of the footage here because it was really long, just carefully uh, basically sanding it down until it matched that. And I would always have to do a test fit and go back and forth between testing it and then re-sanding a bit. So you can see here you mallet on the bottom of the handle and the axe will start to slide on. And if it gets stuck, you can easily see where it was rubbing and you can correct that with the sander. Eventually I got it so there's about a quarter inch of the handle sticking through, which is right where I want it. So I pop off the axe head and get ready to mount it to the lathe. So before turning, I, as always, rough off the corners with a hand plane. This saves a lot of time of skipping the roughing process at the lathe because you take care of those sharp edges and it only takes a couple minutes and you get some nice shavings. So because this is a two inch by two inch square stock, it actually fits right in the two inch jaws that I have on my chuck. And so I didn't have to worry about forming any kind of tenon. And I put a live center on the socket, the eye socket itself, and that'll just help stabilize the uh, work while I'm spindle turning. So I use a, a roughing carbide tool to slowly form the cylindrical uh, surface of the handle. And even though I took off those edges, this still does actually take quite a while. It's probably the most boring part of turning. But you can see here I've got a nice uh, chatter-free cylinder, and so that means I'm ready to start forming the profile. I didn't have any real plan with this as I often do with some of these easier turning projects. I just start turning the blank and kind of stopping the lathe frequently to see the progress. and. I just wanted to put some nice contours on it and sort of, you know, make it somewhat like what you would expect an axe handle to feel like. So here I'm thinning out the portion where you're going to be actually holding the handle with your hand. To get this dimension right, I would frequently turn off the lathe and just kind of feel it and see if it seemed comfortable. After that, I just started doing the profiling on the top where it's going to be meeting the axe. I just added a few decorative uh, rings here just to kind of give it something to look at. It was looking pretty plain. But overall, the profile was really simple. So I just I f finished smoothing that out before I begin sanding it down. Now, one thing I should have done here is, I mean, I, I got as close as I could to the, uh, the eye of the handle with the lathe, but obviously it becomes eccentric and non-circular there, so you have to be a little careful. But I just start sanding it down and I bring it through 600 grit. And then I just, while the spinning at low RPMs, I just apply a couple coats of tongue oil just to give it a little protection. It also, it's easier to put it on on the lathe than it is to take it off and put it on. I don't put any finish on the, the eye. And to, but I didn't have a parting tool, so I just, I just sawed it off carefully. And I actually didn't even end up smoothing that bottom, the, the, the butt of the handle, because I figured that's going to be taking some use and abuse anyway. 
Now the next thing I do is cut in to make a slot for putting a tenon in, or a wedge in, once I attach the axe head. I should have done this deeper, but my, my slot was beginning to go slightly off center, which was making me worried. Um, and I use a standard wood shim here as the wedge, and I really wish I'd gone deeper, but I will say it's very secure, and I guess the test of time will decide if it's on there well. I then take it over to the crosscut sled just to cut that even. And again, I, I leave about a quarter inch there of reveal. I use a chisel to somewhat take off those sharp edges. And then I come back with the Dremel and just add a slight chamfer around the top there. It's not perfect, but again, this is, you know, this is one of those applications where it's, it's going to be a tool, not a, you know, decorative piece of fine furniture. So it's, it's okay to have a few rough spots. But overall, I was pleased with how it turned out, and it was start to, time to start working on the sheath for it. So I had a lot of this veggie tanned leather left over from when I first ordered it from uh, Weaver Leathercraft. And I'll leave a link there. They've got tons of different types of leather you can get. I'll leave a link if you guys want to pick some up. And I didn't have, I mean, I watched a couple videos on how to do this, but I, I kind of just, I again, I did most of this by eye. So I started off by tracing the axe head out on the leather. And you can see how I flipped it over there to get a mirror image because I'm going to be folding it over and I want it to be, of course, even. And I just carefully cut that out with the utility knife, making sure to put a nice sharp new blade in so that I can cut right through the leather. Now, even though I traced the other side, I did just flip it over and actually use the line I just cut as reference. That way they're gonna be perfectly symmetrical. And then because the thickness of the ax is, you know, greater than what you would get by just folding the leather over, you have to make a little bit of filler material, which you'll see what that does in a minute, but I just set my dividers to about three-eighths of an inch or so and make this, trace the profile of the front of the axe, and then I just carefully cut that out too to get this filler strip. So you can see how this just fits right on the end there so that when you start stitching this together, you'll have a little bit more separation so that the axe can actually freely slide in there. I use some contact cement to first adhere this so I can get to the stitching and have it, you know, stuck together. You can also just use some clips to have it together while you're stitching, but uh, for an application like this where I don't mind if there's a little contact cement showing through, I, I prefer to use that. I use some tiny alligator clips to keep that clamped. And then because those edges weren't perfectly flush, I actually use a sanding drum on the drill press just carefully sand those flush and actually that worked very well. I then set the dividers to about a quarter of an inch to make a stitch line and then I use my punches to create the holes for stitching. I'll leave a link to where you can get these punches. They're pretty inexpensive and it's really one of the only tools you need to do any kind of leather working, uh, basic leather working that is. These are diamond punches so they go through both ends of the material so you don't have to use an awl when stitching. Now I'm going to be using a saddle stitch and for that I like to get about seven times the length of the profile. That tends to give me a conservative amount of, uh, of thread for this. And I used wax thread that works best on leather. And with saddle stitching you're going to be using a needle on both sides. So what you want to do is feed the thread through the eye and then come back through the standing end and, and poke through it with your needle. And that'll just form a perfect little sliding knot here and that'll secure it to each end. I then throw this in the vise in order to keep it still while I'm doing the saddle stitching. And that's the great thing about the saddle stitching is it's, it's really simple. You can learn it in like five minutes and it's pretty relaxing to do, but you end up with a stitch that's very secure and even if part of the stitch were to fail, the rest won't unravel, which is contrary to if you were, so, if you were stitching the leather with like some sort of machine. Um, stitch lines will totally unravel. Um, so with hand sewing, you're actually getting a bit of extra strength. Now I'm not any kind of pro stitcher or anything, but I'm also in no rush, so I don't mind just going slowly and just, you know, 
taking my time with it. Some people like to go very fast because they're using it as a business, but in this case, I just go at my own pace and try to keep even pressure as I'm tightening so that all those stitches become uh, even looking and you don't have slop throughout. I'd say overall it took me probably about 25 minutes to stitch this together. It's a little hard on the pinkies. You can see when you pull those strings tight, um, it, it can be a little bit aggressive, but uh, I might be getting some little pouches that go over the pinkies just to help protect those a little bit when you're stitching. And I come through to the end and what I do is I, I do the stitch and then feed it back through through the center. I then cut that off and end it with a reef knot. This is just going to ensure that that doesn't unravel. You can use a different type of knot here but a reef knot is, or a square knot is a simple way to tie this off. So next I just needed a small button on there to make sure that the sheath stays attached to the, the axe head when it's on. And so I'm just using a small uh, brass coated buckle for this. And these are pretty simple to install. You just punch and basically punch them into place and use the correct punches for actually attaching the button to its corresponding part. And you get a nice little button that'll help with that. So I wanted to burnish the edges on this, but I still don't have any kind of burnisher. I've seen some pretty cool ones that you can put on a Dremel tool, which I'll have to look into. But I had this piece of ebony sitting around, so I actually just went in and formed a burnisher. And I carefully fit these slots so that they would fit the both the three-ply leather and the single-ply leather so that I can do the burnishing on the lathe. So I just dampen the edges with a bit of water and bring that back to the burnisher and just slowly uh, friction burnish those edges. It wasn't perfect, but it was a cleaner edge than if I had just left it. If you leave it, you've got a ton of little stray hairs that tend to catch and, and just be kind of not the best visually. So it did work pretty well to do it this way. So that took care of the sheath, which means the main parts of this project was done. And I was pretty happy with how it turned out. I decided to just part the burnishing end from the chalk because I wanted to be able to use it by hand down the road and it, most likely if I remounted it to the lathe it would be slightly off center which means I'd have to basically uh, retune it to be on center so I just decided to part it and use it later by hand. So I use a Lansky puck to sharpen the edge a bit. These pucks are really essential, I highly recommend you get one. They've got a fine and a coarse side and work great for sharpening up tools like hatchets and axes and uh, things like that which have a, don't need a razor sharp blade. But otherwise I put my marker on the handle here and you'll see it didn't turn out that great but otherwise that finished off this project. Okay that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed this be sure to subscribe to my channel guys. I really want to get uh, some growth going on my channel. Be sure to also follow me on my new Instagram. I'm going to leave a link here as well. This is a really fun project. I've been wanting to get to it for a while. Uh, it turned out pretty great. The handle works great, the leather uh, sheath looks great, and it kind of gave this, this axe a second chance. So if you enjoyed this, guys, I hope you'll stay around on my channel to see future projects. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.